The Georgia special election is right around the corner, and the balance of power in the Senate hangs in a balance. Voter registration ended Monday, and once again, there will be a large amount of mail-in ballots. Tennessee Republican Senator Marsha Blackburn had one of the candidates, Kelly Loeffler, on her podcast, and she joins me now. Senator, uh, it was a lively podcast. I appreciate you sending it my way. I want to know from you, what do you think the most important takeaway would be for Georgia voters? The most important takeaway for Georgia voters is how Senator Leffler grew up on a farm, started punching a time clock because her parents wanted to teach her the value of time and money and teach her about the ethics of hard work. And because of that and that training and working her way through school, being the first of her family to go to school, she has been able to build a career to chart her own path to become not only an employee but then an employer and understanding what it takes to be successful in the business world. And indeed, as she went from being the employee to the employer, Kelly has remembered those lessons that she learned and how grateful I am that she has brought them to bear as we have addressed the issues of COVID-19, the impact that is there, and the way you, you have seen her weigh in on what businesses need to keep the doors open. And she talks a lot about small businesses in Georgia mm -hmm. and that experience that she brought to her, brought with her to the Senate has really been invaluable. Do, do you, since the, uh, the, the debate on, on Monday, do you feel, uh, I haven't seen any polling or any commentary out of it, but do you think uh, she scored enough? Because it felt interesting. I, I just, as a viewer, I felt like I couldn't get a straight answer. Uh, and, and I didn't feel like the, 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 the questions were, any, no one was really pressed per se. So you have to really just kind of leave it to the viewer to, to figure out who was being more honest is there, is, is there any takeaway from that you, that you want to share with us? You know, the, she has done very well, and the response from the debate has been very good for her. Because uh, you're right, it was tough to get some answers, especially from Raphael Warnock uh, with his radical agenda and the support that he gives for defunding the police, uh, defunding the military. And these are, these are differences between the two candidates. Uh, Warnock has also called our police thugs, said you can't be a Christian and love God and serve in the military. Right. And right. They're just some really uh, far, far reaching ideas. But you're right. He didn't want to talk about that court packing question. <laughs> well, did he? I, I, I can I tell you what, th there was a time in Georgia that those were non-starters at all. So we certainly are seeing something of a sea change. I want to ask you real quick, if I can, one of your colleagues urging President Trump not to sign any stimulus bill without checks to Americans. You know, on this one, I feel like I'm with him on this. And it's odd because I'm really with uh, Bernie Sanders feels this way, AOC feels this way. But I think stimulus, uh, Senator Blackburn, without, without checks to American households for the most needy, isn't going to work. Charles, I have to tell you, the thing I hear most from people is they want to see that plus up in unemployment so that they don't get just a one-time check, which, of course, has been helpful. And we really are so focused on helping Tennesseans that have lost lives and livelihoods. And they continue to tell us we need support for small businesses so people can keep right. their jobs, right. people that have lost their jobs, no fault of their own. They want to see that plus up, that weekly $300 a week plus up in those unemployment checks until they can get back to work. They also right. want to see more money for testing and money to get these children back in school. I agree a thousand percent. I think you're absolutely right. Those things should be in there. I just hope this time around uh, that lawmakers don't let the perfect be the enemy of the good. And certainly the clock is ticking. Senator, I always appreciate your time and your thoughtful insights. Thank you very much.